All right, here we are down for the the live sale between Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash with Michael Zapsic and Darren with Pressing Matters and me with Free Alarm Comics. So uh, I guess the big thing is we're just going to go ahead and I guess we can talk for a little bit while we're waiting for a few people to get on since we started sure. a little bit late. But um, uh, if anybody's watching, well, I guess nobody's watching quite yet, so we'll wait to go to the rules as far as what we're doing. Uh, but all three of us have a couple of books that we've got that we're going to put up. And from what I saw a little bit earlier, it's going to be something that a lot of people are going to love. Oh, yeah. So uh, so we already got a few people, so we'll go ahead and get started. But uh, oh, Josh Booth, hey, how's it going, buddy? Um, but, uh, you know, basically, if you, let me put this little thing up here. Uh, there's a little banner thing here. If you see any item you want, type claim or I want or however you want to know it so we'll know what it is for the item you're wanting. Uh, if multiple claims for the same item are made, the item will go to the very first person we see on our end. It may show up differently on yours, but we have to go by what we see on our end. Uh, after everything is done, we will go ahead and uh, get shipping information. Uh, I know, uh, I think, Mike, your prices include shipping? Yes. And uh, then um, uh, but we'll get addresses and everything from you, and we will get uh, get everything out to you. That's so, fantastic. Oh, do nice. He's making, making himself up. A, is that uh, <laughs> vanilla, French vanilla Irish coffee? Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> naked, naked Irish coffee. All right, good deal. All right, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> so, Scott, it's been a long time. How the hell are you? And that's awesome that I can't hear a damn thing you're saying, because guess what? You're mute, Scott. Sorry about that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a few weeks since we. Well, actually, been about a month since we actually had a chance to really talk. Yeah, it has uh, been. We we. Well, I think the last time we talked was when when y'all got y'all's little y'all's little present. Yeah, with yes. you and Julia. Oh my God! Yes, yes. Oh my God! Thank you so much. Yes, because uh, that came up for the Kevin Smith, uh, the the Clerks three, the twenty fifth anniversary of Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash, our twenty fifth anniversary. Yes. The silver anniversary of uh, the store being open. And uh, you sent Julia and me a, an edible bouquet. And thank you so much. That was so sweet of you. Oh, um, no, it's my pleasure. I, I figured with everything, I mean, you had all the craziness going on with the stash bash. Then you had some other issues going on at home. I figured, you know what? Let's just let's just get something to, to brighten your day a little bit. <laughs> and you did. Thank you so much. So, uh, boys, who wants to go first? Uh, well, let's say it's change this up a little bit. and then There we'll you go. All right, Mike, you want to go first? No, I really don't. Why don't you go first? Uh, well, <laughs> don't be shy. All right. Not shy. I just want Scott to go first. <laughs> All right, then we'll start off with, let me grab it. Everything's sitting here. We'll start off first. Let's just have some fun with, I'm sorry, the green screen's kind of messing up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> X-Men 266, the very first, well, kind of the first appearance of Gambit. <laughs> Uh, annual first pull appearance. First pull appearance, even though he had like 14 panels and was called by name and everything else in the annual. <laughs> but this is still considered the first pull appearance of uh, Gambit. And what were we doing this one for? Let's see. Do, 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 do. We rented that one for 150. Wow, great! That's price. a steal. So and it's a steal. beautiful copy. We picked it up not long ago, but it's been sitting here and nobody's wanted to bite on it. So up here we'll have fun with it. Put it up for 150. Good deal. So anybody wants it, it is there. Very cool. I don't know about you, but uh, I've been going through a ton. And when I say a ton, I mean a shit ton of uh, wall books. I've just, it's been boom, 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 boom. And I've uh, redone my wall book uh, wall. That's redundant. Um, <laughs> I've, I've redone it uh, three times over the past month. Wow. Where I've had to just, you know, there's nothing left on there. Yeah, we're actually doing ours today. And before this started, I took everything off of our wall. So right now you go in there, it's all pretty much blank. And then as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to go in there and just, I'm thinking about actually doing almost theme parts of the wall, like maybe a Star Wars section and a, cool and idea. A, you know, that type of thing. So just kind of, and then maybe even do, we did this a while back, which I loved, which we did, um, I guess you call them homage covers. Yeah. 
and did basically we would have the original with all the homages that will be had along with it. Oh, that's really cool. But don't do the Fantastic Four number one with all the homage. That's, <laughs> that's, the Burn comics alone will like yeah right. You know, <laughs> under the weight of it. So. <laughs> Well, it's fun. Like you, know, like you have the thing number one, and then you know you, you got to put like the the bad rock number one up there with it. You know that that even though Leipold said he never saw it before, but it looks just exactly like it. That type of thing. So, <laughs> hmm. all right. Who wants to go next? Come on, I'll go. go ahead. Go ahead, Darren. All right. So with the uh, with the news of a Wonder Man show coming, I figured I pulled this book out. As you can see, it is a Kirby cover. Um, great story, Resurrection of Simon, who is uh, Wonder Man. So it's Avengers 152. It's in fantastic shape. Um, a couple of minor little dings on the spine, maybe down in the corner. Um, I can let this go for 10 bucks. Oh, wow. Wow. That's a steal. That's amazing. And anybody who's just said, we got a little more people in, but anybody who's listening in, like I said, if you see something you like, just type claim and what it is. And whichever one we see on our end, that's who it's going to go to first. So uh, that's a fantastic yeah. right there. That's that's amazing. Uh, anyone who hasn't heard about the, the Wonder Man series, this is I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, Wonder Man's one of my favorite characters. Uh, I've always loved Simon Williams. And when I was a kid, because he, he was always like the Avenger who was afraid. Like every time something happened, he was like, oh my God, I, I could get killed again. And yes. That, that exactly. to me was so cool. So like, wow. Well, do you remember, you know, he 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 just got resurrected and I want to say it was like four or five issues later, they took on Ultron and Ultron almost put him back in the grave and he's like, yeah. oh, time out. <laughs> yeah, because he, um, it was, it was in that one you showed me, 161. Right. Where all the Avengers were were going up against them. They just wanted to show you how powerful Wonder Man was. Right. And it took him like, you know, Ultron was like, interesting. It took him almost three seconds to fall after I hit him with my, you know, my death beam or whatever he called it. Right. Um, and so he's like, he was supposed to be their version of Superman. That's right. Oh, I'm not sure, Miguel, if, this, if you're wanting to claim the Avengers or you're talking about it, but if you do, just, to say type in there you want to claim it or whatever, then Derek can stick it to the side for you. Operators are standing by. I believe they are. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what I'm in here. There we there go. We go. We're gonna go with uh, the Joker number one. Oh, this is, uh, so Miguel already claimed your um, your Avengers. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is a very nice copy. Uh, I would put this at 7.5 or above if you were about to get this graded. Um, it was the very first solo Joker series. And if I'm not mistaken, the very first time uh, a super villain got his own book. Exactly. Um, I've got a price tag of $75 on here. 50 bucks shipped. Holy crap. Damn. Yeah, 50 50 shipped. And uh, if you go on Key Collector, I think it's $125. So so there's a lot of meat on the bone if someone wants to slab it. Yep. You know? And, and if you wanted, you could actually get it pressed and possibly get it through pressing matters and get it even possibly better than that 7.5. This is true. This is that true. Would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, DJ, man. So my DJ man. is claiming oh. the Joker. Wow. All right. Gotcha. Well, wow. Sorry, no, sorry, Miguel. DJ know. got it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll move on to my next one. And we're going to do Captain Marvel number 17, the first nice. appearance of Phi Lavelle. Ooh. So, yes. Uh, this is one of those ones that's getting, depending on what's going on, and sorry for the green screen craziness, but uh, <laughs> I may have to turn that part off. But um, it's a gorgeous book. I couldn't really find anything wrong with it. Uh, I, I, as anyway, I can never guarantee it's going to be a 9.8 or better, but it is at least a 9.6. It possibly would get a 9.8 out of it. Uh, but we're going to do that one for where are we at? Um, for 65 bucks. Nice. I love how we're all like, let's scroll through our key collector. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> well, you got, you got to get what people balance. want. Well, I'm between sorry. that and go collect, people are wanting whatever's on there. That's on their right. Table. So that's right. That's right. And 
this is actually a really cool book because nobody expected like genus bell and mm -hmm. i have no idea where it's gonna go especially in the um the mcu but the fact that ms marvel and the marvels is coming out you know ms marvel's on uh disney plus right disney now plus like, yes on marvels i'm really looking forward to seeing this I've actually enjoyed it. I haven't only watched the first episode of, of Miss Marvel, and actually, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of fun. It was, and it was very well executed. Right, right. And yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's not my demographic, but I did love it. Yeah, Same it was fun. Time. Yeah. And then, well, oh, well I know y'all been talking about it on y'all show, but uh, uh, in Obi Wan, you know, if you could, if you could just kind of enjoy it for what it is, especially it's been fantastic as well. Yes, there's. I have a couple of issues with Obi Wan, <laughs> but overall, I think that Hayden Christensen, holy crap, is he a great Darth Vader? Freaking doing incredibly well with it. I've, I've been very, very happy, and the, and then even the boys have been watching it, and it's been, it's been crazy. I know, wow. right? It's a great time to be a uh, a comic book collector. Absolutely, Absolutely. nerd. Well, do you remember back in the 70s how there was just such a scarcity of anything for Marvel on TV? And we would take any scrap. You know, you had Hulk, you had Spider-Man, but then they would throw us maybe Doctor Strange or the Red Brown Captain America. And we would eat it up because other than that, there was nothing. Now look, nothing. now there's 100 channels with this stuff. You know, it's incredible. Well, that's why I get people all the time. They're complaining and whining about it. I'm like, dude. Do you know what we had to grow up with? You know, if we would have had this back in our day, this would have been like the, I mean, even bigger than it is now. For us, it would have yeah. been like the, the penultimate of everything. Yeah, right. everybody's head would have exploded. Right. <laughs> we absolutely, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely adored the legends of the superheroes. Oh, I thought it was fantastic. There was that and the roast. I know. They, they were both god awful. <laughs> they were so much, the worst part is for for God, I can't probably for decades. I would tell people like, no, I remember back when I was a kid, and they had this live action thing where they had Flash and Green Lantern and Shazam and Hawkman and like you were crazy. I'm like, no, I remember no, that. And finally <laughs> found them decades later. Granted, they're like copies of copies of copies <laughs> on VHS. Oh yeah, but uh, but it was freaking great, dude. It was incredible because because we were so. I mean, let's put it this way. We were so starved for any kind of entertainment. I don't know about you, but my parents held the remote control. I didn't have a TV in my room. We had yep. two TVs in the house. One was in the parents' room. One was in our uh, living room. And they held sway. If if my dad wanted to watch Quincy, God damn it, we were watching Quincy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there was no VHS or anything like that. You know, no, no. I mean, no. Those were back in the days when your kids were your remote control. Wait, yes, go change the channel. Go put on golf. Or move <laughs> right. where, we, where we were at, we had those big antennas. He's like, All right, you go outside, you charge. I stop yelling. All right, there you go. Yeah, seriously, if you get struck by lightning, so much the better because then it'll probably give us a really, really good reception. <laughs> yeah, but you know, and you try and tell you try and tell the youth of today, you know, TV used to go off at 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah, the test pattern would come on, there would be no other shows. It was it, dude, 12 o'clock and lights out. <laughs> And then what? you haven't lived until you put tinfoil on rabbit ears. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of old, <laughs> here's what my next offering is going to be. So, you know, Thor is about to drop in July. And at the time, this used to be a really big book because it had a Silver Surfer crossover. So it's issue 193. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of seen better days. It's a little soiled. It's, it's got some dings on the spine. So I definitely would give this a very fine minus. I have 35 on it. I'll let it go for 25. Oh, wow. Damn. And uh, Scott, just Ish Mavens is asking, what's the grade on the Uncanny 166? Yeah, I was going to wait till my turn came back around. Yeah, I mean, it's easily a 9.6, um, possibly a 9. Like I said, I never want to do anybody. Uh oh. Miguel is also claiming your Thor. Uh, but yeah, it's easily a 9.6. Uh, I, I never want to claim anything as a 9.8 because you never know what the graders and everything else. So, That's right. Uh, you know, basically, I tell most people anything I get is going to be, if, if unless I tell you different, it's going to be a 9.4 or better. Uh, I think it's 266, not 166. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 266. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would honestly looking at it, I'd say it's at least a 9.6. It, it put, could push a 9.8. I don't see any dings, any any spinal damage. Corners are all sharp. So. 
You stand by your book. And that's, I think the three of us can agree. We stand by our books. So. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. He's actually, all right. Ish is claiving the 266. Okay. Nice. All right. right. Let's see. Got a sale. All and, right. Cool. So next up. You are up. Uh, let's see. What am I going to do next? All right. All right, folks. Here you go. I've got an amazing Spider-Man 209. Ah, oh, yeah. Two oh, zero. Yes. Uh, this is uh, from 1980. It is the first appearance of Calypso. Now, that may not mean that name will not mean anything to you right now. But yeah. once the Craven movie hits, you're going to be wishing you bought this one. Oh, yeah. So, first Calypso, I put this at. I'm going to put it in a, like a 9-2. Wow. Very, very nice. Wow. Um, gorgeous piece. And let's go 50 bucks, 50 shipped. Oh, damn. Are you selling the, the Johnny that walks to the background too? Johnny is not for <laughs> sale. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's just like zing, you know, right over his head. All right, Miguel. Miguel is claiming your Spider-Man. Nice. And I got you, Ish, too. If you would, shoot me a message uh, th through Facebook or whatever, and then just so I'll have it. Otherwise, I'm about to comb back through all the comments on here, and I'll get you the invoice out as soon as we get done with all this. Well, hell, I guess I'll jump in then. Wow. And it's you have fun it's your turn. With, with the, this is the thank you issue of the trade variant of the trade paperback for Rebels. So it actually has issues one through six, I believe. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes. So it's first six issues of Rebels. And um, uh, it will you know, just go through. And then I, I don't even know if they released this one as a regular thing yet. This is mainly just a, as I said, just the thank you issue so far. But we're going to do that one for 40 bucks. Nice. That's a great price. Because so. there's no price tag on the back. No, there is not. There is no. Oh, no. <laughs> Dad, give it. All right, screw it. Saying, it's saying all you know, three alarm comics on the back. Thank you. you. Know what? I'm going to turn off this green screen for me. It's making it worse. Very all personalized. Right. <laughs> uh, Again, you're not. I, it's perfectly fine, Scott. All right, we'll leave it then. All right. <laughs> However you'd like. All right. Um, well, Brian, Darren, you, if anybody wants one from me. Here's my stuff. If you want to send the money, 50 bucks for two people. Wow. Uh, PayPal at viewaskew.com. That's PayPal at viewaskew.com. Um, put your name, address, and I will send them out Monday. Nice. Okay. Monday. And then Ish, I will, I'll tell you what, I'll, just, I'll, I'll message you or if I'll, I'll go back and find it on here and get your stuff as well. Uh, and get you an invoice out through PayPal probably as soon as we're done with this. And same thing, I will be able to get them out Monday. So nicely done. All right, Darren, you're up. All right, I'm going to go to Slab Central here. Uh -oh. We've got Ms. Marvel number 18, first appearance of Who Would Become Mystique. It's signed by Chris Claremont. It's a 7 5. Wow, look at that. I've got a 110 price tag on it. I will let it go for 90 bucks. Ooh, damn. Uh, yes, DJ, there was, but Ish got it. It's long gone now. <laughs> so 90 bucks for this Ms. Marvel. Now, this was really cool. And again, Wonder Man's in there. That's right. And back in the, uh, the Avengers when Ms. Marvel was guesting a lot. Like, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I know what I'm talking oh, about. Every time a Wonder Man gets mentioned, the dogs go crazy. I know. <laughs> it's, it's like, I'm All right. Um, so I'm sitting here going, um, with, with Wonder Man, with, with the head, will he, won't he, will he, won't he, will they, won't they, you know, Ms. Marvel and Wonder Man. Now, he had a crush on the Scarlet Witch even back then. And they were like throwing it back and forth. Is you know there was there was an attraction between him and Ms. Marvel, and they kind of put a, a, a halt to that when uh, Ms. Marvel joined the team. And you know um, 
they had um, the Avengers going after a Taskmaster, and um, he's he's standing out there, and they're they're all standing outside, casing this joint, and he says, you know, we should, you know, one of us should bust in there because, and Ms. Marvel's like, why? Because you're the men, and, and you're supposed to go in there, and you're gonna save poor Wasp, and he's like, no, because we're her friends, and I was like. Yeah, all right, there we go. They're they're never getting together. So. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I, I I don't know why. And I mean, you you and I share this, uh, share the same passion. Or Wonder Man's always been a, a fun character for me. I've always enjoyed him. I mean, even when they had his own mini series or even regular series and the one shot, you know, those were just some fun books and the storylines are just great. Yeah, because I mean, he's a guy who, if. Any one, any one of the three of us got superpowers, we'd still be like, oh my god, just, you know, people shooting at you, and you're like, get, you know, ah, uh-uh. <laughs> like, the hell, you know, it, it's sort of natural. And I was like, that's how probably how I'd be. And growing up is, you know, growing up in the '70s, we had nuclear war possi- possible. You know, we were still. You're hiding under your desk and having drills. Of course, yeah. So, you know, we, we were constantly bombarded by fear. So I was like, it's pretty natural. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what was it also? Yeah, well, you had to put your head between your legs and pretty much kiss your butt goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, you know, like a potato bug in the hallway when the alarm went off. It's a, like if a bomb really went off and they found you, there'd be like 100 kids all Yeah, with their heads up. between their legs. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so it's easy to clean them up, I guess. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Like Pompeii, where it'd just be like blackened uh, silhouette in the back. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the ash stuff sitting up there. Hey, wait, you know, that just reminded me. Do you remember that um, in the 80s that uh, they had a special for two days, that movie called The Day After Tomorrow? Yeah. Remember how that was really, it really used to mess people up, that show. Yeah. Jason you, Robarts, it really showed you what could happen. Jason Robarts and Joe Beth Williams, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yes. And, right. Steve Gutenberg. Yeah, and it, it had, you know, um, the parents should be warned not to show anybody under the age of 17. Right. And I was like, God, I was like 14. I was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to watch this. But yeah. I was like, I'm not going to watch this because this is going to mess up. Yeah. <laughs> I read a book called uh, War Day by Whitley Strieber and Jim Somebody. Uh, I forget who the – well, Whitley Strieber is the guy who did Communion. He was um, – um, a fiction writer, and then the other guy was like an actual journalist, and they uh, they wrote War Day. And it, was, it was 1986. Nuclear war happened. It was a very limited garage, and they were moving across America, and they, that's that's what they were doing. They were just they wanted to like showcase the entire war from an American's point of view. Wow, and it was weird, and it was depressing, and you're like. I'm I'm like 16 years old reading this, going, why why even bother? Right. <laughs> why even bother living? You know. And then I started reading my comic book. I'm like, oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> You'll go from what's the use to what the hell? Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm I'm going I'm going, boys. We're gonna go with Marvel Premiere 25. There we go. Marvel Premiere 25. This is uh. This is in decent shape. I'd put this at a 7.5. Uh, off-white pages, little flexing on the inside. But the really cool thing about this is that it was uh, John Burns' first turn at um, Iron Fist. Yes. Uh, he would cement his uh, reputation as a comic book artist on the Uncanny X-Men. But first, he was here. And he was here with Chris Claremont. So it was actually really cool. This is where the Chris Claremont, uh, John Byrne team first started to gel. And then they moved over to Marvel Team Up. But this is uh, his first run on Iron Fist. And um, I'm going to put this. uh, Let's go 35 shift. Oh, cool. All right. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, actually, not long after that, a good buddy of mine took over the the Iron Fist thing. Incredible guy, which we I really would love to get up to the stash one day. Uh, Pat Roderick, super, yeah, super Pat. Nice guy, yeah. Actually, uh, Pat did it prior to uh, John Byrne. That's right. It was prior to it. Yeah, he did it before all that. Yeah, 
And Pat's uh, uh, Pat was one of my favorite uh, artists growing up. So, I mean, he had a run on uh, Legion of Superheroes. Not to yeah. minimize the Iron Fist uh, stuff that he did, but I'm, I absolutely loved his stuff. And he, he did, um, he also Firestorm. Did Micronauts after mm -hmm. right? Michael Golden. Yeah, they took over, did Firestorm for a long time, and then, you know, got the Green Lantern when they rebooted all that. Yeah, he did the Justice League 200, the Firestorm versus uh, mm -hmm. Washington Manhunter chapter. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've always been a big fan of his, and getting to know him is even better. Him and his wife are the sweetest people in the world. Darren's had the opportunity to hang out with him, too, and they're just so, so sweet. Oh, absolutely. He's so, I mean, he's, I don't want to say the consummate hippie, but he's this gentle soul, you know? I would say consummate hippie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Darren, somebody is asking, um, have you heard of House of Fantasy Comics and Games in Niagara Falls? They're gone. So what happened was he was, um, I forget the gentleman's name, he had been there forever since the 60s or 70s, and he owned the building. But the problem with Niagara Falls, it's not like you see in the Marilyn Monroe movies. It's actually pretty decrepit. And he was on Pine Street, which is, you know, you, you take your life in your hands if you went to his shop. So he finally, after so many years, decided to sell the building. And all the stock had already been sold off to uh, a local proprietor. So unfortunately, he, it's no more. Another shop that bit the dust. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, he did say that they closed in 2019. Yeah. Every day, which is, hey, yeah, we that, Local comic shops become, you know, part of our lives for God's sake. Well, there's there's one. I mean, when I uh, when I just got out of optometry school, there was a one that right around the corner called Collectors Inn, and they're they're in the final death throes right now. Um, they're doing a sell off sale. They're going to be gone in a couple of weeks. Man, so sorry to hear that. COVID was COVID was not kind to some people. I'll tell you. Well, I wasn't so, kind to anyone. So right. Yeah, you know, there, there there are a few of us that were lucky to to be able to to. You know, do some more like the online sales and things like that who jumped on it pretty quick and were able to make it through some of those lean times with the help of everybody with that 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 was a lifesaver for a lot of us that's right that's right absolutely yeah all right i got a new book well i'm gonna go first if that's all right oh yeah that's right sorry my bad <laughs> go for it John, well uh, the next one i'm gonna bring up is yeah. secret wars number seven it is the first appearance of titania whatever with the she hulk stuff coming up this book's getting a lot more steam, and we are going to do this one for thirty dollars shipped. Dang! Nice, so nice. Yeah. One. All right, Darren. Now we'll go over to you. All right. So I was deciding in between two books, and I think because the Avengers and uh, Wonder Man are getting a lot of love, here's issue one hundred and sixty. <laughs> Now, you got a lot of stuff going on here because, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but Vision's brain pattern came from Wonder Man, right? Yeah, don't say it, because okay. right before he died, Henry Pym uh, copied his brain pattern and then, you know, kept it in his... Henry Pym, weird dude. <laughs> very, very odd set of... Um, he, he's like Egon Spengler. He collects... More, more, uh, what is it? Mold, spores, and fungus. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Pim did. It's like, I'm going to take everyone's brain pattern. Eh, why the hell not? <laughs> did that like after uh, Wonder Man was dead? Because why wouldn't you? Right. Like, hey, he's a corpse. Let's get his brain wave. Yeah, That's you never know. <laughs> but then, but then you got the Grim Reaper, who I believe is the brother of, mm -hmm. which makes yeah. this an incredible story. Eric Williams. And uh, back in uh, Avengers 105-ish, right? Yeah. Um, Grim Reaper had teamed up with the Space Phantom, and they were going to uh, wipe out the Avengers, except for the Vision, who um, the Grim Reaper thought was his brother. Right. So he's like, you got my brother's brain pattern, so you're just my brother in a plastic body. So, cool. Y'all right, have to forgive me on side. Apparently, somebody's here wanting to sell something. I'll be right back, but y'all keep going. <laughs> hey, hey it's business. bring them on. Yeah, bring them on. We'll buy it from them. <laughs> so, all right. So, issue 160, I'm going to let it go for 10 bucks. Damn. It's, I mean, it's a, easily, it's a 9 4 copy. Tell you what, if, if at the end, 
These people, these foolish, foolish people. <laughs> you and I do a little horse trading. You got it. Beautiful. So I, I guess it's up to me. Ooh. It's up to you now. It's all you. No, no, no. Miguel just claimed that Avengers. So bummer for me. Go. But good for Miguel. All right, Miguel. It's all yours. Okay. Captain Marvel, number 31. It is. This is oh. just yeah. a thing of beauty. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put this at about an 8.5. little foxing. Not much soiling, but, you know, with the white on the, the covers, especially on the gutter right here. Uh, a little tough. But, uh, like I said, about an 8.5. Um, I didn't take a look inside. Well, I did to, to make sure that it was intact. But um, didn't check for foxing. But, you know, crisp corners. Very nice. Marvel and the Avengers take on Thanos or Thanos or however the hell you want to say it. <laughs> I'm going to put this at 35 shipped. So, you know what I love? Um, I, I have a love eight relationship with Marvel um, Entertainment when they make the movies because they always feel they always have to tweak something. And if you, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but when the Cosmic Cube was made, it was made by AIM, correct? Right. And I think it was made for the Red Skull. Yes. Right? So so this was the most powerful weapon in the world, and it was called the Cosmic Cube. But for some reason, when we got the Marvel movies, they had to call it the Tesseract. I, you know, I don't know why, but I guess it just rolls off the tongue easier. So, I guess Cosmic Cube just was too alliterative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's... That was the first that was the first Captain Marvel book I ever had. And there's a fantastic series where the Avengers are just taking on Thanos. And at some point I want to say it was uh, Captain Marvel who kicks the cube from Thanos's hand and it starts this scrum that is just only Starlin can draw it. Oh, where they're just trying to tackle, they're trying to take Thanos down as everybody's like running to grab the cube, you know. It's a great story. Great 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 story. All right, well, you know what? Speaking of Thanos and being the... Oh, here he is. Hold on, hold on. There he is. I got him. If, anybody, if anybody's interested, I now have five sets of Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Very nice. So, Very good. Are, are they still in plastic bags? No. They're still in the three for a dollar twenty-nine bags? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, it is you, so, sir. So, well, somebody claimed the Avengers. I don't know if you got that yet. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, then I will. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go up next then. I guess I'll go ahead and put up this nice thing. Oh, oof. New Mutants 98, first appearance of Deadpool. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Like I said, there is one little tiny, tiny, tiny tick right by, I don't know if you can see it or not, right by uh, Boom Boom's eyes there. But other than that, the corners are sharp. It's beautiful. Uh, I was going to do that one for 350 that's a great price. Very so, nice. Put that one to the side there. So question, because um, I know there's talk about a Thunderbolts um, series. Is it possible that Deadpool will join ranks with the Thunderbolts? You never know. Okay. That would be very cool, but I don't see uh, – actually, you know what? I do see Ryan Reynolds being that guy who is a team player, who's like – I, I would love to do this. I think that would be fantastic. But, but is it, what they is, will Sony allow them to go over? Right. Right. Yeah, right. it is Sony. Yeah, Sony. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, if if the check's big enough, Sony will let them do anything. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> if the House of Mouse pays the money, it's all good. All right. Well, I guess it's, it's my turn. This is a better time to play buy them back. Yeah. Very true. Anything is possible. And if they don't buy them back, they'll just buy Sony. <laughs> <laughs> Happened to Fox. <laughs> Go to town. I got one. Oof. Groovy. So Marvel yeah. two and one. Thing in Spider Man. Nice. We've been a little Thanos heavy. What's that? We've been a little Thanos heavy today. I'm I telling it. you, I don't know what it was. Fantastic. It's just but uh it's a it's a good king size annual. Um, it looks like it's Starlin artwork, if I'm not mistaken. Plus, we also have a little bit of uh, Warlock going on, which should be coming soon, I think, to the movies, right? So, 
I mean, I would give this, this is a solid upper middle grade book. It's a little soiled. The bottom of the cover has got a couple of dings to it. Um, there's a little crease that breaks color in the upper right hand, upper right hand corner. I have it for 26. I'll let it go for 15. Oh, wow. Damn. Wow. Well, we, we gotta, we gotta be smart too and figure out how to keep our books in the, in the, in the frame. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I guess we'll move over because apparently somebody else has some Captain Marvel. No, no, no. You missed. Excuse your oh, you some oh, jet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll talk about trying to double up or sell stuff to me. Ah, sure. <laughs> All right, here we go, folks. This is going to be really weird for me to do, but speaking of thank yous, I've got a Knights of the Fifth Dimension. Uh, retailer, thank you. I've seen these going online for like 50 to 75 bucks. This can be yours for $25 shipped. Nice. Man, that's a that's a that's a crazy price for it. Yeah, I've still got mine, but I I, I I hadn't even done anything with it yet. $25. That's right. $25. Let's see. Oh, I was looking at Chris's thing. Yeah, we we might we've done some stuff with them before, mainly just t-shirts and things though. We, we love we call them. We we call them Sparky because Flamey kind of went to other other connotations. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pride Month, Scott. Call him Flamey. Flamey, he is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I will go ahead and put, well, since you're already talking about it earlier, we will bring. Of course, the green screen is going to really mess this one up. Oh, sure is. I love Thunderbolt it. Thunderbolt one. Yeah. The Inviso cover. Yes, yes, the see-through cover. <laughs> but yes, Thunderbolts number one. I should have not done the green screen today, apparently. It's had a few with green stuff. But um, with the all the heat with the Thunderbolts, like you were talking about earlier, we, I've only got this one for 30 bucks. Nice. Oh, damn. Great price. Damn. Yeah. And hopefully, like I said, it'll, it'll, well, I had two choices. I had the other one I had that would go along with what you're saying, but I was like, well, I'll wait and do this one first. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so yeah, 30 bucks for the Thunderbolts. All right, fantastic. All right, it's a back to me, is it? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm gonna break from the whole Avengers thing, take that off the easel, and we're going to switch to Steranko-era X-Men. Wow. It is uh, issue 51. It's, it's solid. It's really a nice copy. The gloss is beautiful. Um, edges and are, are sharp. There's some minor blunting on the corners, and there's a minor crease, which looked like it could have been when somebody read it and maybe turned the page a little too much near the spine, but it's very, very fine. Um, I would give this about a 7.5. Seven I have it for 70. I'll let it go for 50. Man. Nice. That's a great copy. That's a great ad. I'm telling you, that stuff is amazing. I agree. A great job. Stranko, Stranko did what? Three issues of X Men? Yeah. yeah. I think his first one was the one with Blast Star on the cover, which was yes. really a killer cover. Yep. Yeah, All right. Well, I will move over. Are you ready for yours, Mike? Oh, it's me. It's me. Yeah. Oh, look at me. Uh, yes, actually, I am. <laughs> I, because I have to, uh, I'm putting up. <laughs> This Marvel's greatest comics um, oh, number. Yeah. This is actually really cool. Um, Marvel's greatest comics. It's the reprint of yeah. we just came in there. Adam Warlock. Uh, this is the power of him before he became Warlock. Um, unfortunately, it's a white cover, so the there's a, a little bit of. Uh, Grease and grime and dirt in just a minute. You know, there's a, a little bit of just off whiting. So what I'll do for this is twenty five dollars. Nice. Yeah, even those were those reprints. They had a very very small print run on those things. And the best part is, is I see. I remember back in the day, you could that's you could buy them without having to spend an arm and a leg on the stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I remember back then, and you could get um, this is way before the trade paperback. 
Yeah. yeah. Marvel's yeah. greatest comics, uh, Marvel Super Action, uh, Marvel Amazing Triple Action. action. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was a Marvel double action, triple action, double double feature, double action. triple action. Double feature, that's it. Marvel yes. Tales, Marvel Spectacular, all of those. You know. Yeah, that you was. Know, some, honestly, I used to love that because they'd always refer back to you. know, back in the day, you see a little asterisk at the bottom. You know, refer back to well, whatever issue, and you can never find it because, like I said, it was one of those ones that was way beforehand. But you could find those reprints fairly easily and, and still enjoy the stuff. That's one of the things that I loved, and uh, it's in Avengers 160, was the editor's notes. Yes. They, it was, they had the Beast who was remembering back when he was an X-Man, and you had George Perez's, you know, X-Men, and they're all gathered around Professor X, and you're like, this is amazing, this is so cool. And you, you wanted to go out and read that stuff, and then you, you went and you read it, and you're like, Wow, this is even better than I thought because that's exactly right, Scott. They would do the uh, the reprints, mm -hmm. and X Men for three years was a reprint title. They, yes, they just kept reprinting their stuff. I was like, wow, this is because they didn't want to cancel it. No. Well, Mike, I have a question because you um, and I sell comics. You did in the beginning. You did a little bit of uh, talk about that. What What was the actual print run? for that run from what 60 something to 93 what i mean was it a low print run or what very low print run because x-men was not a good selling title for marvel no. okay but they kept it there and they kept reprinting uh the comics because um they didn't want to they were actually being printed by dc so national periodicals they they owned the um the print shop so Marvel was locked into like a certain number. Like if you have to have this many every month printing, which is why they had the deadlines. Right. Coming up against the deadlines because Marvel was over a barrel. They had to print, they had to print X number of titles per month, or they would get screwed over by DC. Do that long enough, DC would just cancel their uh, contract with them. Wow. And then there are no Marvel titles coming out. So, <laughs> So, you know, you know, that also leads me to wonder, too, because if you remember back, a lot of the Silver Age Marvel books had the Marvel chipping on the side. And I always used to think and I, I never had it clarified from anyone, but I used to think that um, DC had their books printed and cut first. And by the time Marvel's books were done second, the blades would have been duller. And therefore, yeah. caused the chipping, and it makes you wonder. And Martin Goodwin worked at Martin Goodman, right? That was uh, Stan's uncle, I think it was. Yeah. And he worked the deal to get them that. And I gotta think that he got he got put over a barrel because a lot of chipping was going on in those days. And you know, it wasn't just a, a happenstance. It had to be for a reason. And I think oh, yeah. it was because they played second fiddle to DC. You know. Yeah, and they were getting the iron staples. I don't know if there was like six months where they were all iron staples. Right. And rusted. Yeah. And I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. And <laughs> awful. Well, and that's what you get when you when you, you have your competition doing your stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, they, yeah. They, they had no choice because they had no money to do this. They right. weren't owned by uh, Warner Brothers. They weren't owned by anybody with any uh, cachet or cash. Right. Uh, so that they, they had to like yeah i know we're putting out this you know the superior product but yeah <laughs> well it's like a lot of people don't realize even even well even into the 90s you know, image was under Mal uh, malibu for the oh, longest wow. time uh all their stuff was being printed and done through malibu which and, and eventually was owned by marvel yes <laughs> Yeah, they ended up buying them for their coloring department, I believe. Wow. Which is nuts because then, like, a year or two later, Marvel went bankrupt. So Yeah. Well, they went bankrupt because they were buying anything and everything under the sun. Like, oh, well, we rather than license somebody else to do our cards, we'll just buy four card companies and we'll do those. <laughs> you know, let's do our own. Let's, let's just distribute our own stuff. Rather, even though we don't know what we're doing, let's just go ahead and give this a shot. And yeah, just all with the hell in a handbasket quick. Well, that was what L'Oreal bought them or um, <laughs> one. Uh, it was uh, the woman who was uh, Ellen Barkin was married to what's his name? Uh, Pearl Pearlman. Wow. Yeah. So. Oh, we've got a lovely hello, Julia Demeo Zapsic. Yes. 
Uh, speak, yeah, speak which too. Like y'all been doing great too. Just before I forget about it, with the, uh, the I love seeing you and Christian and yes. and Julia on there for the for the for the stash stuff. Uh, uh, I know Ming's running around everywhere, but yeah, it's, y'all been y'all. Uh, she's actually been really good with all that stuff. Really, really good. Oh, she's fantastic, and she's she's a really great student of uh, comic books. She's she loves books. She she was a comic book fan before she met me. Uh, and then, you know, due to circumstances, you know, you, you have a family um, and you got to stop reading. Uh, I didn't because it was sort of homework for me. I had to keep reading. But uh, I like how she keeps y'all in line and keeps y'all straight. Uh, yeah, but now, boom, um, she's she's got to get back into it. So. Oh, good. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and throw mine up again. Let's see what we got here. We're going to go, damn it, these damn see-through books. <laughs> um, but I'm going to do the Voltron number one from Modern Comics. Oh, that's This awesome. is the first Ultra or Voltron in comics, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there was a very, very small print run on these. There was, I think it was a three-issue miniseries. Wow. And, uh, where is, oh, get the green, there we go. But um, we're going to do this one for 60 bucks. Nice. That yeah. is, I remember seeing that and being like, wow, people are charging $25 for this. There's no way that's like years it's ago. It's going up like crazy lately. I think the European variant of it, the price variant is hitting over a hundred bucks right now. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Is there is there any talk of having it like licensed for a TV or a reboot or something? Or I mean, just, honestly, I think there is some talk on it, but I think most anything, just like even lately, the Smurfs have had a resurgence. Wow. So Planet of the Apes has had a resurgence. Right. You know, all these different things, you know, even if there's a hint or a slight rumor that that something nostalgia is getting picked up, people are going crazy for it. Wow. That's unbelievable. I mean, I'm still waiting for Shogun Warriors. I'm still waiting for Micronauts. I mean, those have to have ROM. I mean, those everything in a 20-year cycle seems to come around at some point, you know? Well, who is it? Is it IDW that was doing ROM for a while again? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, and even the Micronauts or this, but but that's the problem is that the licensing they do it, they're getting pushed from one place to another, to another, to another, where they don't ever get a chance to grow it, get a, a foothold anywhere. Sure. Well, and, like you, know, you said, with, following. well, like you said with Planet of the Apes, I think I just read that. Isn't isn't aren't they coming back to Marvel next year? I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you figure, they're they're getting also you figure, yeah. Aliens, Predator, now Planet of the Apes. Yeah, wow. all it's, it's all going around. That makes no sense to me though, because they just gave up their Star Wars licensing, Marvel. Yeah, yeah. The, wow. and Marvel and Star Wars, but they're going to Dark Horse with the Star Wars stuff. Right. Doesn't make any sense. No, that's a I mean, okay. I can think. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Reading them, we're going back and reading all this stuff again. The the Dark Horse stuff was, even though I enjoyed the current Star Wars stuff through Marvel. The stuff through Dark Horse, writing, everything was just 10 times better. I, I will agree with you on the Star Wars stuff, but the Darth Vader-centric stuff, Marvel kicks their ass. <laughs> that, that, all all the, the Darth Vader stuff, I mean, like we were talking about the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, show, I can't wait because um, this stuff is now in play because all of the... Hayden Christensen loved getting back in the, the costume again. Nice. And it's like, I want to do this more. And if they have a Darth Vader on Disney Plus and they don't use the stuff that Marvel... Oh, yeah, they'll be, they're crazy. They're insane. It's it's just stupid. Well, you it's, know... It's fantastic. Because, you know, at some point you want to see Dr. Aphra. You want to see Thrawn. I mean, you got to you got to have these characters come out at some point. So. Well, Thrawn's supposed to be coming out with the Ahsoka part, isn't it? Oh, yep. OK. What OK. He, what he says, what he says, <laughs> what, what that guy says. That's cool. um, yeah, Ahsoka is supposed to have Thrawn because uh, they've okay. also got Ezra Bridger, which is why if and no one claimed that Rebels, you're fools. You're yeah. fools. Tells you. <laughs> All right, I got yeah, so I've got a set of the Heir to the Empire in there that nobody's batted an eye at. What? Just you I, wait. It's a complete set of them, and they've been sitting in there for quite a while, and nobody's batted an yeah, eye. Yeah, well, at. wait, wait until the first drop of hints, and then all of a sudden, they're 
you know, you'll have yeah. you'll have people coming at you. Yeah, you ever heard of this thing, uh, Heir to the Empire? And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Mike, I'm going to work off of what you were we were just talking about with the X Men in the reprints, and I got um, X Men number ninety one. And uh, anybody who remembers, um, you know, back in the day, a guy by the name of John Buscema used to put out some seriously good work. And uh, he, I mean, he's graced covers and insides of Avengers and, and X-Men in particular. And this is a nice repro, um, reprint, number uh, 91. It's, it's yellowed. I mean, it's definitely seen better days. Um, I would, again, give this about a, a, a six or a seven. And I have 45 on it. I'm going to let it go for 30. And I'll throw in a cleaning and a pressing because I now have ways to make whites non yellow to make colors pop and to make this look really good. So I'll give it to you for a low price in a grade that's a six and hopefully get it up to about a seven or an eight when I'm done with that. So. Damn. Damn. Yeah, speaking of which, I, I know you're you're you've got a lot of stuff you you've got going on. Oh yeah. Uh, how how far behind are you on trying to get a lot of these things done? You know, I I I, uh, I did um there's a fantastic comic show in Rochester called Empire Comic Fest. And I decided to just have a, you know, I, I had a special for the day and I said $10 any any era comic clean and press just 10 bucks and I had guys bringing me in long boxes. And that just waylaid me. And I'm, I've got, you know, I, I appreciate people wanting to get things done in a timely manner. And I try and explain to people, look, I'm right now I'm working on books from September. And these are short, short boxes of books. So I'm what I've tried to do to expedite is everybody, you know, obviously when they come in, in, in line, they, they get one gets done first and second and so on. But I, I break it down my my pressing and cleaning into morning and afternoon shifts. So mornings I'll do Silver Age, Bronze Age, Gold, and then at nights or afternoons I do moderns. So that I keep things rolling, but even still, I'm I'm behind. Yeah, I know it was. I forget when he turned them in, but one of our guys sent some beautiful books up there to you. Oh, and I, you know what? Let him know, at the bit. <laughs> let him know that I'm going to do his books ten at a time because if we submit, and you you can attest to this, if we submit all of his books. It'll probably be a five or six thousand dollar bill, and that's oh, I think it'd be more than that. It might be ten. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I'm you're, gonna, talking, I'm gonna, you're, you're talking books like like multiple copies of Hulk one eighty one and right and, uh, X Men ninety four and Giant Size and Golden Age Captain America twenty seven. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. He, he sent some really really nice books off. Yeah, Mike, you you would have loved it because you remember that cover that they used. They reproed it in uh, when they did the Winter Soldier. Do you remember yes. that cover where Cap and, and Winter Soul and then the back they have that good that's he gave me that golden age book to work on and it's wow. a beautiful condition but it, it needs some work. So gotcha. you know how golden age books are, man. Those oh. things are just I won't touch them. No. I mean I literally <laughs> will put on gloves, yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to touch this with my bare hands. Right. Yeah, right. Put them in like a manila folder so it won't crease it as you do it. Right. <laughs> I want to be like Dr. Octopus where I put it in like an aquarium. <laughs> hands in there. And I'm like doing this and I'm like, you know, let's see if I can get the. Uh, you know. <laughs> but it's it, that stuff is just so insane and it's so brittle. It is. Yes. No matter what you do, uh, unless you. <laughs> Unless you're like the boy in the plastic bubble, <laughs> stuff just gets really, really brittle. And yeah, and there's no way to really rehydrate those things. No, well, there is. there is. Oh, there is. Yeah. So my dad, my dad passed a couple of years back, and he left me his um, this wine cooler. So it's got a perfect seal around it, and the way you have to make a humidity chamber. Now, what's interesting is you know there's formulas for everything for modern, for silver, and for gold. So you you make an ambient uh, uh, percentage, what do they call percentage of uh, relative humidity? And if you put a golden age or golden age books in there, it sucks the humidity right out because you figure there's 75 plus years old, different paper stock, thicker paper stock, and these things are dry. The fact that they they actually they had a lifespan that lasted through paper rations and through a time when nobody was looking at these like collectibles. 
you know, they're in an attic in a basement. These are dry books. And they yeah. suck the moisture, but it takes a long time to re-moisturize them because they're just so damn dry. You so, know? so you're saying if I've got a, a, a cigar humidifier that I haven't used in forever. Yes. <laughs> and yes, I'm thinking exactly. your cigars. I, I mean, they oh. wouldn't have to be this big. Oh, I got some, I, I've got some pretty big humidifiers. But the one saving grace, and it, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling, is that most houses back in the day used radiant heat and radiator heat yeah so it would it would um keep moisture in the air so that's, that's right. for anybody who was you know uh collecting comics back then and putting them in plastic bags and you know taping them up you had that yeah that's but right that's right then, like the 70s and 80s hit and you've got central heating central air it dries everything out yeah so it's like wow that's amazing and it's not even something that I had ever thought of right? until like the past 10 years. And I'm like, oh my God, why is this coming in? Why are there like black, why is there black mold on here? It's like, that's why, okay, yeah. this makes sense. So, you know, and people are like, why are, you, why are you giving me 10 cents on the dollar for this thing? It's because, <laughs> yep. look, see this black fingerprint? This is from your grandmother who wanted to throw it out. <laughs> I can see, you know, it tells a story for God's sakes. That's right. That's the fun part about a lot of those too, though. But, but even then, that's what like, people tell me all the time. You know, well, this book goes for this much. I'm like, no, because of all these different things that are wrong with it. But I also like buying high or, or higher, normally higher end books like that because it makes them affordable for somebody who just wants it. Right. Right. That's what I just bought a collection from somebody yesterday. It was a guy who's like, hey, I'm 65 years old. I'm trying to get rid of this stuff. I had it since I was like 10. He's like, and now it's time. And it's mostly Archie's and stuff, but I gave him like $40 for what he had. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving out the Archie's to kids now. So yeah, there you go. That's what I tell people all the time, especially Archie, Richie Rich. I mean, I loved Richie Rich growing up, all those. But, oh, you know, there's oh, not yeah. much of a market. I mean, you could go online and they're probably booking or guiding for for decent money. But that's what I tell people all the time, too. Is that's why it's called a price guide and not a price law. Yeah, you know, that's, it's, right. It's, that's right. You know, it's it's just a guide to go by, but you know, you know, it may say that the this Richie Rich book's worth thirty bucks, but you're not even going to get a dollar for it. Find a guy who's no. going to spend that. Nobody's it's Richie Rich. No, nope. <laughs> no. And you know, it's not like a Scooby Doo or something like that. Yeah. Oh man, getting back to some good old days. So I think if Mike's up now. Oh, am I? I, Mike? I believe so. All right. all right. Well, all right, boys. I'm going to have to leave soon, so this might be my last one. Uh-oh. Ah, okay. Ooh. Yeah. That was what so much original, fun. What if the original Marvel bullpen had become the <laughs> Four? Now, Darren had sent me a bunch of what ifs, and he knows my love of what ifs. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This, this was not one of them, Darren. I'm not selling out for money. That's right. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. I'd never do that, first off. And number two, um, actually, I've had a flood of people bringing me what ifs and Marvel premieres. So oh, good. I know. I'm, I'm wow. like, I'm loving this. And I, I just had um, uh, a Marvel, uh, Marvel team up number one came in. Oh. Horrible condition. Oh my god. So uh, but I still love to read it. So this oh, is yeah. the original Marvel bullpen. Uh this is uh, I mean it's not in perfect condition. I'm gonna give this about a seven. Uh but but Stanley, Jack Kirby, oh <laughs> and what what do we have? We got uh Joel Brodsky. Al Brodsky. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes, and Flo. Um, I'm so I'm sorry, Flo. I love you, Flo, but I forget your last name. Um, the, Mar the original Marvel bullpen becomes the fantastic board. <laughs> this is hilarity at its best. So um, I'm going to go 15 bucks shipped. Nice. Oh, right. Do you think maybe that was the start of the assistant editor months? I, I miss those days, too. So yeah. Do doing board yeah, yeah, like what if what if Aunt May became a Herald of Galactus? Stuff like that, <laughs> you know? The dorky, nerdy stuff that we loved growing up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of those, like I said, I, for one, for a while, you know, I, I, I like try to collect different crazy stuff just off the wall. And one of the things was going around and finding all the assistant editor month books and putting them into like one big stack. 
That's just insane. <laughs> You'd be the first person I've ever seen with a set of the existing. <laughs> that was a complete set of them. That's been, then you should put them up as a brick. Well, what I was thinking about doing was actually getting them all bound together in like some of those hardcovers. Oh yeah. And you, know, you do your own hardcovers and bound sure. them, bind them together. Just because I mean, let's be honest, they're not really worth anything, but they are some of the best great stories I've read in forever. So like I said, they're just they're fun. Well, didn't they? I mean, wasn't one of the hits when they did that in Assistant Editors Month? Wasn't that like Peter Porker? Wasn't I mean, was that did, I thought? Didn't it come out in one of those, or was well, that something totally so. different? Though they did have the Avengers on David Letterman. That's right. They did. That's right. That's right. I had, uh, Iron Man was <laughs> like the kids are. Uh, they kicked Iron Man. The, this group of little rascals. They were. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. 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 They were basically the little rascals. And they, they were all Avengers. They all had their Avengers, you know, um, analog. Costumes, yeah. And, yeah, they had costumes, and they did stuff. And one kid was um, Iron Man. And since Iron Man got thrown out of the Avengers because he was a drunk, and they even said, hey, no, I was drinking. He got kicked out of the Avengers. He's like, but I don't drink. It's like, it doesn't matter. He's thrown out of the And he saved their asses because he also had um, – his Iron Man roller skates. Yes. <laughs> One of my favorite pieces of his, you know, um, his arsenal, which I'm surprised they never made, but whatever, <laughs> uh, in the MCU. So, yeah, they, they threw him out, but he saved their asses, so they let him back in. <laughs> yeah, some of those are so much fun. I mean, even the, um, oh, God, I'm what was the... Um, DC, well, my favorite thing on DC was, I said, like the Batman family, Superman family, same thing getting back to, you would get a new story, but you get all these old reprints and, yeah. and oh, so yeah. many great, great things from way back when. And then you'd also, but now some, looks like a lot of those things are going up in value because they, their first appearances of characters and things like that now. I mean, nobody cared mm -hmm. about it back then. Right. Batman family uh, number eight is the first. Harlequin. Uh, Harley, yeah, the yeah. first uh, Joker's daughter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll be, great. Well, a dent. After my Legion run, those were the first few. I, I said I like collecting off the wall runs of stuff, and I I completed my Superman family and Batman family. Then I was going to go into my Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen's, but that's just way too much. I'm gonna have to deal with all that. Yeah, if you need any, give me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> They're like Archie and Richie Riches. Just exactly. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Lois, no. <the> domination. <laughs> What was it? Oh, speaking of which, yeah, like even I'll throw mine up. My last minute one right here. We're talking about um, Planet of the Apes, but wow. I've got the Forbidden Zone Planet of the Apes. Dun dun dun! With a beautiful Leonard Kirk cover, Mark McKenna, I believe, actually, who, yeah, he, I think he inked it. But yeah, Leonard Kirk covers not Leonard Kirk. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mark McKenna color, covered it. Yeah, Mark McKenna penciled it. I think Leonard Kirk inked it or whatever. But yeah, that's it. And that one is a whole $15. Nice. Very, oh. very nice. You got okay. one last one you want to throw up right quick, Darren? Or I do. Stay on. You know, it might go. We can stay on for a while. It seems that Avengers uh, seems to be hitting the nerve with everyone. So let's do another George Perez, Pablo Marcos cover. And, of course, I know Mike likes this one. This is when uh, Henry... This is when Henry Pym loses his shit <laughs> and uh, decides to don the costume again and just start beating the living shit out of all the Avengers. And I mean, what can you say? George Perez, he just he just encapsulated that that era of considerably newer Avengers. And of course, Wonder Man is in this one as well. And that's um, his new costume. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Right. So what we got here, it's um, it's in really fantastic shape. Uh, for especially for a majority of white color color uh, or colorless color, um, I would say this is about a nine two or a nine four. I got it for twenty five. I'll let it go for fifteen. Oh wow! Damn. Yeah, can you imagine being George, George Perez and having to draw all those freaking ants all, all over that blast? You know what's worse? Here's a little trivia for you boys. Hey, um, Darren, do me a favor. Take a look at one of those ants. Count the number of legs they have. Eight. They have eight legs. Ants <laughs> don't have eight legs. And he not only did he make that mistake once, he made that mistake 
50 million times. <laughs> he's like, I don't do it. He's like, I, I guess they're mutant ants. So oh, there you, you got Miguel claiming it. Oh, okay. Damn, Miguel, good job. <laughs> Well, Mike, I said uh, thanks for coming by and hanging yeah, out. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Thanks, thanks for, so for doing it. A lot of fun. Uh, we'll have to get together again and get, get it going. Hopefully, get it ready, maybe on a decent schedule so we get more people tuning in and, and getting used to it again. Yeah, we can yeah, try. We can try this in like two weeks if you're up for it. I'm up yeah, for it. Yeah, check my. I'll check my schedule with the fire department and see what days I'm going to see. If I'm off this Saturday, let's see. Let's see. I work next Saturday, but two Saturdays from now I should be off. Perfect. Well, then let's do it. All right, sounds good. Well, everybody, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, we will get with y'all next time as soon as we figure out a date. Or if, we, if we get it things going, we'll announce it for two Saturdays from now. And thank you. We'll contact everybody. Or if you if you bought something, uh, said if you bought something from Mike, send him uh, the stuff that view. I'll be bringing you up there a little bit bigger there so we can see it. PayPal at viewaskew.com. Send him how much money you owe him. If you bought something from Darren, just get a hold of him and uh, over at Pressing Matters LLC so he can get you an invoice out or here or for me at Three Alarm Comics and we'll get you an invoice out. Thank you all very much and we will see you soon. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>